Hello, everybody, and welcome to Christian Worship. Uh, I'm here in the week one folder, um, just to emphasize that uh, we are in week one. <laughs> and so, but but before we get into the week one information, I want to jump to the the syllabus and the schedule. This uh, video will cover both week one and kind of an overview of everything. I'm going to try to do it quick um, in under 15 minutes because that's as long as my video recorder will do in one sitting. And uh, also because I feel like if we go longer than that, it's just not very interesting for a student to sit there and uh, you can go over the stuff yourself. So <clears throat> Christian worship, this is going to be a fun class. Uh, I think it's something, especially at a place like Moody, that has been in existence for a long, long time. And as you well know, worship and worship services and styles and so many different things come into the way things have been done. And yet you guys are primarily a young generation, most of you being you know under 20 years old, um, that take this course from us and, uh, and have grown up, many of you, in traditional uh, worship circles and many of you in in what would be called more progressive or modern or whatever the other names are. Uh, regardless, all of you uh, are, are relatively young and uh, are going to have some, some different mindsets and I think been exposed in, uh, in the move of God of, of, in terms of worship specifically uh, to things that in the past have not been as, um, you know, as normative. Think of, think of just, uh, you know, your parents. Did they ever have the opportunity to attend uh, like worship uh, uh, concerts? So today, whether it's uh, Hillsong or one of the many other kind of major Christian labels that go around touring to do worship, not specifically Christian music. That's different. There was Christian music certainly back then. But today there there are multiple streams and, and bands and, and church music groups that, that are literally touring and doing worship where the worship act obviously with primarily with music is, is something that is gathering people, gathering young people, and something very different than, than previous generations have ever seen. Um, so that's just something I want to bring in the forefront is, is how are we, what are we even starting from and where are we going with this? Um, but first and foremost, if you go to the syllabus and schedule, I want you to um, open that up. Um, the, for whatever reason, in Blackboard here, um, you'll see the, there's two different things as usual. The syllabus is something that you can click on, print off, um, as well as the schedule of the course. Um, the schedule is basically a nice PDF broken down with all the weeks and so forth if you prefer to look at it that way. Um, but the syllabus has a couple things in it that I at least don't see on this page. It'll be helpful to at least initially go through and then I'll flip back to, to the Blackboard page. Um, but this is what the syllabus looks like on the front page. I just want to briefly go over the description goals and objectives of the course. Um, first off, the description of the course is to examine biblical models and principles of worship in order to form an understanding of worship that is God-pleasing, Christ-centered, and applies to both corporate worship experiences and all of life. So what, what are we talking about there? I, I know that the syllabus is oftentimes like the most boring thing to start with, and you're just going to flip through and look at the assignments. I want you to pause for a moment and just take a second to think through what has been laid before you in terms of this class and the content and what are we trying to accomplish? So first and foremost, when we say we want to examine biblical models, we mean that we're not going to start from what's happening um, in the culture um, or what your experience is or what churches are doing. Um, we're going to get into that but um, to a bit anyway. But the point to start with is to examine biblically where do we get models and principles of worship. That's going to start um, in terms of forming our understanding of worship and this concept of God-pleasing. A little bit of that topic is, is talked about in the first video of the week. <clears throat> now, Christ-centered is obviously something that all Christians understand. You know, worship, what are we worshiping? Uh, we're worshiping the King, and so Christ-centered is, is important. And then something that applies both to corporate worship, meaning when you gather as a church, as a body to worship, and what that experience looks like, as well as worship in all of life. We all have, have heard the phrase that worship isn't just the Sunday morning music set. It's, it's our life is worship. And uh, we all know that, but do we all um, have ways to go or at least an opportunity to dive deeper into the reality of 
What does it look like to continually be growing in this process of my life being a form of worship, where my work is a form of worship, where my interaction with people is a form of worship, when I'm shopping, when I'm driving, when I'm raising kids, when I'm, when I'm uh, sleeping? How, how can I literally make my life a place that allows the presence of God to be so central and so focused that it becomes a worship experience. So that's something that we're going to touch on in this course. The goals of the course then are to understand the nature of biblical worship, to understand patterns and principles of worship that are in both the Old and New Testament texts, and then to understand the application of biblical worship values, meaning that, that we're not going to get from the Old and New Testament a, a roadmap to know exactly what this is supposed to look like in our worship services, but we're going to gather values from the Old and New Testament that's going to help us determine what are the ways that we can um, set up current day worship context in such a way that it's biblically sound uh, and that it's still valuing that which Scripture was showing us to value. And, uh, and, and ultimately all of this is so that you as individuals can become better worshipers and that the overflow of that will be those that you minister to, the churches you minister in, will become better worshiping communities. And then the objectives of the course, articulate the definition of worship first and foremost. So what is worship? That's kind of going to be the question I want you guys to wrestle with this week. Con uh, contrast the Old and New Testament um, and the worship that's addressed in both of those, particularly with respect to the role and centrality of Christ. So obviously Jesus Christ is not mentioned in the Old Testament, but what is the Old Testament uh, doing that, that uh, builds towards the New Testament worship of Jesus? So they, they are a continuance of each other. They are not two separate um, unrelated things. They are, they are something where the Old Testament, the law, is, is something that is not done in the New Testament. It's fulfilled. And, and so that, that revelation is something that we have to um, allow ourselves to, to then view all of the Old Testament when we see worship through that lens uh, as we filter in our understanding of, of Christ and the centrality of Christ in worship. So, and then third, summarize biblical principles and values of worship that apply to all worshiping Christians today, I, that, that gets into to this course goal. Describe worship that pleases God. Respond to worship issues in the church from within a biblical framework. Uh, and then design a worship service is going to be something that we give you the opportunity to do. Um, all right, so here are your readings. You should already know those. Um, that's all I'm going to get to on this front page. I'm going to go back to Blackboard now. And uh, uh, simply get in briefly to <clears throat> the, the assignments. If you don't have the textbooks already, you need to get them ASAP, either ordering them online, um, Kindle, um, or having them shipped overnight um, so you're not going through most of this week without books. Uh, Amazon is usually the quickest in my experience, all right? So I won't get into these assignments um, in detail because I want to get to week one because that's what's important, but I want to give you just a broad overview of what the course looks like. Um, class participation, this one, uh, the big one is discussion boards. And, and so ultimately in the discussion boards, you guys have probably all done this before, um, but the main thing in the discussion boards, um, you'll see that the discussions in this course um, have three different opportunities to at least this first week. Some of them are two questions, some of them are three. Most of the time in your discussion boards in the past, you've seen that you only answer, uh, well, you have one paragraph. It might be multiple questions, but like it's basically one discussion. This is kind of this this course breaks them into multiple and we'll show you that in a minute and, and I'll talk about that in a second. But as per usual, um, we we want you to make a, a main post um, by by Friday. Uh, sorry, it's it's going to be uh, Friday, 11:59 p.m. Um, Central Time. And then Monday at 11.59 is when the final week is due. So essentially every week your initial posts on, on the discussion is due Friday before midnight, Friday night before midnight, 11.59 p.m. Central Time. So note where you're located for that. Sorry for those of you in uh, other time zones or continents. And then um, it, this is the kind of the standard discussion board. Respond to at least two of your classmates' initial posts by the end of the week, meaning Monday at 11:59 um, p.m. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we want to tweak that in this course. So let's, um, but I'll do that when I get to week one. 
in a second. So um, you'll see basically you've got um, assignment one, exam one, assignment two, assignment three, exam two, and assignment four in addition to the discussion boards of the class. So you've got uh, four main assignments and then two exams. That last one is going to be this worship service design. Um, your exams are going to be um, multiple choice questions that are that are covering um, everything from your your textbook uh, on frame as well as the Bible reading and the required videos that you have to watch. Um, the videos are very short. I'll post some videos um, just to supplement things, but um, the videos that are embedded in the course resources folder are very short videos, so that's not a huge part of your time, but it's important to pay attention to them and even take notes if you'd like to, to make sure that you're well prepared for a multiple choice exam um, on the frame text, the Bible reading, and the required um, video views viewing. All right, so those are the two exams. Uh, they'll be in, well, basically the midway point at the end of week four and then at the end of week eight. And then the, the four assignments uh, are going to be kind of smattered throughout. Smattered, I don't use that word very often. <laughs> smattered. Uh, but doing week three is the first assignment um, and, uh, and then week five and, and week seven. I'm going to go over these other assignments when we get closer um, to them, but feel free to, to please read them. Try to get a feel for them um, and, and then ask me um, about them um, if you've got any questions that you feel is pertinent to know now versus when I go over them. I'll give you, obviously, um, time. I'm not going to just go over them the week before. I'll give you a couple weeks heads up um, on them um, when we go over them, but I don't want to give you too much info here. Um, this week because it can be overwhelming as, as you see the the grading scale is right here here is what each um, piece of the course is worth so 25 percent of your grade are discussion boards um, so if you do well on those and you simply turn stuff in all your assignments in it's going to be really hard to fail this course guys so do do a diligent job in here and you are all going to be a-okay all right so week one um, the objectives for week one specifically are to describe broad and narrow usages of the term worship and just making you aware of how wide and broad, but then how narrow just the term worship can be. And then explain the goal and focus of worship. I, I'd like, even as I'm talking right now, what, how would you describe what is worship? And discuss the concepts of worship derived from biblical terms translated worship and then describe the centrality of worship to the Christian's existence. Here's your reading for the week, and then in terms of your video, all you have to do is click on the Lesson 1 resource folder. It's right there. Boom. So you just open up that bad boy and, and just click on. Uh, you can either read it. That's the script. It's written out for you. If any of you have trouble uploading videos, a couple of you are overseas, and it's going to be easier just to read the script, and that's fine too. So you can just click that, download the script, um, or click that, and it pops up a little um, video like that with uh, these guys talking. I'm sorry, it's not the most exciting video in the world, but um, it is brief and, and it gets at the, the context of, of the questions we're, we're getting at for this week pretty quickly. And then you'll see basically be, beyond the reading is the discussions for this first week. And this is what I was talking about that's a little bit different than what you've seen in the past. And that is that the discussions for week one are divided discussion A, discussion B, and discussion C. Discussion A being, do you expect corporate worship to please gratify or fulfill yourself? Be honest about this one. Or do you feel other people um, are expecting that? I would say most probably are, but expound on that. In what ways can you adjust your thinking so that the intent of your worship is to please God? That's the first question, and that's discussion A. So you click on that um, to go to that discussion board. Click on discussion B to go to that one. Um, Frame says that worship is the whole point uh, of our existence as the body of, of Christ. Do you agree? Would you say that your church generally agrees? Should this statement affect priorities in the life and ministry of your church? And then finally, based on what you have read and heard so far, suggest a working definition of worship. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> talk pretty fast here because I only have like 30 seconds before my 15 minutes is up. But basically for this discussion, you click each one and you fulfill a, a post for each one. And then I want you to respond to at least one post for each discussion. So for this week, you'd actually have three posts because you're going to post for A, B, and C. And then you're also going to respond to each discussion A, B, and C. So you'd have three additional posts by Monday. So by Friday, you should have all posted to discussion A, B, and C. 
and by Monday night, you should have all posted to at least one other person's A, B, and C. Does that make sense? Blessings to all.